Email 31, I had a question on how you do number 57. So when we take a look at 57, the starting constraint they give us is that if I was to look at the area of this entire garden and walkway, that area is 378 feet squared. So ultimately, I know that area is length times width, if you wanted to call this the length and the width, but we, we need to come up with an expression or an equation, I should say, that doesn't involve two variables. Because right now I have two variables. I have an L and a W. I know that's equal to 378, but the fact that I have two variables is a problem. So that's what we're going to try and do. If I can get rid of one of these variables or both of them, however I can do it, but if I can narrow it down to one variable, then I can solve the problem. Because if I have one variable and one equation, I'm good to go. But right now you can see I'm out of whack. I have two variables and only one equation. So we'll just put a little sad face on that. That's, that's just not workable when you're dealing with equations or dealing with trying to solve variables and you only have one equation but two variables. So how is this gonna work? So I wanna get an idea of how to write length times width with just one variable. And they, they defined your variable here. They told you that this, this path this walkway around the perimeter, they're telling you, hey, it's X feet wide. Well, I want you to imagine, if we start to think of this, again, I can call this length and I can call this width again, but if I wanna piece this together, if we really wanna take a look at the length, and I'll just draw a really sad vertical line here, but let's see if we can come up with an expression for this. I know this distance here is X. I know this distance here is X, right? That's X, that's X and this is 12. So if I talk about the length of this entire vertical bar, I know the length is equal to x. Oops, let me write that a little better. I know it's equal to x plus 12 plus x. Or if I want to simplify that, that's 12 plus 2x. And on the flip of that, if I take a look, let me change my pen color and let's do the width, right? I'll make a really semi-terrible vertical line here. All right, but I know this distance here is x, this distance here is 15, and again, this distance here is x. So if I take a look at the width, it's x plus 15 plus x, which is like saying 15 plus 2x. So all of a sudden, I can substitute these into this length times width equation, and that's where you see me starting out with equation one. Right? If I let me highlight this, I know that the area, instead of it just being length times width, I know it is 12 plus 2x times 15 plus 2x. Right? And then if I foil that out, collect like terms, I'm I'm at this equation, right? I'm at the fact that 4x squared plus 54x plus 180 is the area, but I also know that the area is 378. So once I get to this step, I have a quadratic equation and I need to solve that quadratic equation. And this entire section talks about your three methods, or we've been practicing the three methods for solving a quadratic equation. You can factor, you can use the quadratic formula, or you can complete the square. All right, and I've mentioned before, but it's good to mention again, my favorite method is factoring. All right, my next favorite method is the quadratic formula, and the one I try and avoid, if I can, is completing the square. So you can see in my work moving towards the end of this problem that I did ultimately factor it. All right, and if you like factoring and you're solid at it, then do it. But a lot of times I run into students who are like, man, I'm just not into factoring, I don't quite remember it. Okay, then go with the quadratic formula. The cool thing about the quadratic formula and completing the square is that they always work. All right, that's the cool thing about these is that you will always get to an answer. Factoring, if it works, it's usually faster, but it might not always work. And in this case, it did. All right, I used a technique here called split the middle term. If you learn that 
in high school or college, great. If you didn't, that's okay. I want to show you just a, a slightly different way to do it. So I'm going to, I'm going to cut in on this step and I'm going to just do another way. I'm going to show you another way to do that over here. So let me give myself some space. So let's say I had 4x squared plus 54x minus 198 is equal to zero. The first thing I might notice is that they have a GCF of two. So I could factor that out and say this was two times 2x squared plus 27x. And then if I do take 198 and I divide it by two, I'm gonna get 99. And the reason this happens to be advantageous here is because of this number 99. There's not that many things that multiply to 99. Right, if I break down 99, it's basically three and 33, which is three and 11, right? So, okay, that, that's, that's doable. So I don't have too many combinations of numbers. So when I try and break this down, you might try it oops, with guess and check, breaking it into your two binomials. All right, in terms of the first, right, what multiplies to 2x squared? Well, the only thing that works is 2x and x. And I, this is, again, the guess and check method. What multiplies, oops, excuse me, to 99? Well, we don't have a ton of options. Again, 3 and 33, we just established 3 and 33 do it. Pretty much the only other option, if I go the other direction here, is I could have done 6 and 11. Now, when I look at this, I have a 27 in the middle here. Right? So if I'm looking at my, my linear term, and I'm, now I'm moving here, I see the 27, and I think I can get 27 out of 3 and 33. And let me show you how. I think I can put the 33 here and the 3 here. And if I look at outer and inner right now, again, this is guess and check. Inner gives me 33x, and outer gives me 6x. And oops, I don't know what that, sometimes it turns into these funky, hold on, let me erase this, turns into a circle and I don't know what I did to get there. All right, so like I said, inner gives me 33x, outer, and I'm going to try this better, gives me, oh, don't make another circle, 6x. There we go. All right, now I can get 33x and 6x to be negative 27, or positive 27x, excuse me, if I put a plus sign here and a minus sign here. So that's what makes me think I want to put 2x plus 33 and x minus 30, excuse me, x minus 3 here. So when I start to look at that, let me clean this up just a bit. Let me give myself a little bit more space. All right. So, so far I have a 2, I have a 2x plus 33, and I have an x minus 3. And if I use the zero product property, I know that either 2x plus 33 is equal to 0 or x minus 3 is equal to 0. Okay, well, this gives me x is negative 33 halves, or x is going to equal 3. And because x is a distance, I can't have it be equal to negative 33 halves, so my solution must be 3. And then because, oops, excuse me, because the units are feet, you can see that I put my answer here is 3 feet. All right, so that's how we do 57. Uh, thanks so much, gang. I'll see you later. Bye.